Hey guys, Kiko here. As requested, let's talk about music theory. And before we go for the chords, scales, modes, let's talk about the most fundamental thing in music, in theory, the intervals, the distances between the notes, right? And how they sound, their names, and why they happen, and things like that, right? So. We tend to, to practice the intervals. We see everywhere people talking about, you know, oh, that's the root and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. And it sounds kind of a, you know, sounds like math because you're counting, you know. And then that's not the way that happens in music. Not, is, that's not the way that happens in nature, you know. So the best way to, to practice the intervals, I believe, is using the harmonic series the overtones, which means the first interval you have to practice is the octave, because the octave is the first harmonic, right, in the harmonic series. So every time you play a note, let's say E, so the this, this string here, this, is vibrating, and then in nature something magical happens that half of the, this length here also vibrates double speed, creating an overtone creating uh, an octave, a harmonic, so which is uh, we can isolate here, playing here. So this harmonic. So every time you play this this note here, E. Every time you play the E, there's a octave um, sounding as well, like playing as well, right? And then you have a several other harmonics that will compound a note, right? So as I said in another video, the world is dominated by the doers, not the learners. So it's not about like learning, okay, I understood octave, third, fourth. It's more like how, how can you, uh, you apply those things? How can you make music? Can you make music with the octave? Can you? You know, how can you use the concept of the octave, which is a simple concept, is a note, and you have the same note uh, higher, right? So. So every time you, you try to learn scale, in general, I would say you try to understand the theory, and here the theory is simple, right, I just said. You try to understand which technique you're going to play, you know, so we're going to play here the octave using the alternate picking, you can use legatos, you know, your, your, the, the technique you're going to use to produce the sound. And uh, the perception, you know, uh, trying to understand the sound of the octave, which is would be the easiest one, right? Because it's the same note. But anyways, try to um, to play and hear the octave sound. So the perception, right? And also, as guitar players, we need to map the fretboard. So we need to play the interval, the octave interval, all over the neck to understand the shapes. So it's going to be easier when you start adding other intervals to build a chord, to build a scale, right? And then, uh, so that's why we start with the uh, octave, which is a very simple concept, very simple thing to understand. So the first thing would be playing the octave. Yeah, playing the octave. So here. And then, again, fretboard, mapping the fretboard. So if I play, get the note B. So that's the note B. So that's the octave of the B. So. So I, I memorize those shapes here, you know, here I'm using the techniques like alternate picking. And then you have this, or can you use hybrid picking. So I'm kind of understanding the sound, I, I kind of memorizing the shape, right? I can play like this too. You have this. Right? So, the first thing I would do is to memorize the shapes and start playing. So, uh, F. Right? So, just say any note. Let's say D.
right? So, and then E flat, A flat, start saying notes and then try to play all over the neck, you know, memorizing those shapes. So that's the first way you apply the octaves. You can use the full range of the guitar playing the octaves. So you play E to the, you know, highest E if you have a 24 fret guitar, right? So it's another way to play and to explore full range of your instrument. All right, so in music, we see you can create a riff only with octaves. <laughs> Right? It's an idea. Sounds great. Sounds very consonant because it's the same note. Or you might know. You see? That's the way you learn the theory, octaves, and say like, oh, that's so easy. But yeah, just write immigrant song with that, with that idea. Also, you can play things like um, riffs with octaves. Sounds Sounds great, you know. Um, sometimes it's it's it gets kind of annoying playing um, fifths and power chords all the time. Like, so you can mix with octaves because it sounds different. Right, things like this. So you use the octaves to give a different flavor to your riffs. That's one way to use octaves. Another way to use the octaves, and for me sounds kind of orchestral because in orchestra sometimes you have the violin with the violas and cellos, you know, doubling in octaves, uh, the melodies. So it's like... Uh, so then you play... Right, so it sounds a bit more orchestral like this when you play some melodies and you start playing with octaves. It's another good way to apply the octaves. Another way that you see a lot happening in octaves is like using the open string with the octave and then kind of disrupting the, the, the beauty of the octave with some bends or with uh, legatos and then uh, always coming back to the octave. Something like... <laughs> So you're using the octave like a like a drone, but then you disrupt the octave like with the bends, or it could be only with the seventh. Right? So or or, or like a right. You know, kind of octave and then disrupting the octave, playing another note or bending, and then you can create this friction, the dissonance, and then go back to the octave with like the pure, perfect octave first harmonic of the harmonic series. So it's another thing you can use a lot with uh, distortion, right? Another thing that I use a lot, and I learned that from the master Joe Satriani, he uses this concept a lot as well, so it's like you play a melody and then let's say you play a melody in the first verse and then second verse you just play the same melody but then uh, octave higher and then it's like a man singing and suddenly a woman is singing or like a child is singing. So you're kind of playing the same but different, you know. So it kind of creates more, um, more flow I would say. So you play like, a, uh, I don't know. First verse, second verse. Right, so you repeat kind of, and then because you're playing a different range, you might play a bit different, you know, the with bends or vibratos and stuff like that. So uh, it's a very cool thing. I, you know, a lot of my songs I use that uh, concept of using octave octaves to create um, a new thing without being new, you know. So. Uh, it's a familiar melody, or just repeating in a different octave. Always works, always works. Let me show you how the octaves happening in the blues, right? 
So we have the A, let's say, then octave, then octave, or here. And then you, you do like note, A, phrase, A, phrase and back to the A. You know, it's always like kind of a resting point, a resting note, and then changing the octaves, right? So... You see? So it's always going to the octaves, right? And then creating phrases in between, you know, to create the, you know, the, the movement, the friction, and then you resolve always on the octave. So blues phrasing, guitar phrasing, melodies in general, you know, you have those uh, place to rest and nothing better than resting on the, I mean, I, was, I wouldn't say nothing better, but like resting on the actual note of the chord, you know, the, the root, the tonic of the chord is like a safe place to rest. It's always going to be like, okay, uh, I'm home, you know, kind of, kind of feeling. So that's why resting on the octaves is a very common thing in any improvisation. So let me show you with the clean tone what you can do as well using octaves. First thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, playing with the thumb, West Montgomery style, you know. <laughs> Right, so that's a common thing, you know, in jazz, but it's a great way to play melodies, you know, using the octaves like that. Um, in acoustic guitar, I have a lot of octaves as well, using open strings, you know, they call the campanella. You know, E, 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 E. Something that I use on, on the song Concord Die, but I put the G as well. So basically doing the melody using octaves and keeping the, you know, the drone here. E, 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 right? So many different ways you can do with uh, octaves and uh, using open strings. As you can see, there are so many ways to use the octaves. And the theory is so simple that you might even neglect the fact that you can use in so many different ways a simple thing like the octave. Even the melodies you could create with octaves, although it's very hard to sing because of the big jump, but you have the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow that starts with an octave. Right? Right? Also from Jobin, wave is like uh, A to A, so it's very hard for the singers. I mean, it's a longer melody, but it's basically a phrase to A and then another phrase to, to the octave. Something like that I was showing with the blues licks, right? You know, so, so many ways you can use the octaves. So have fun, apply now. Theory is simple, but the main goal here is, is applying. So for you to compose, to write something, to create a riff, to create a melody, to write songs using octaves. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this theory lesson. Very basic, but with a lot of stuff. So leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next video.